Hello, my name is Mike. I'm one of the naturals here with the ODC Network. Today we're going to take a look at one of the amazing habitats that we have here at the Outdoor Discovery Center. This habitat today is the meadow and right behind me is our sensory trail meadow. This is where we're going to learn all about what a meadow is and, and why it's so special and unique and uh, what it can do for, for the ecosystem. So what is a meadow? A meadow is a habitat that's mostly covered in grasses and other wildflowers. The, the key to a meadow is that it really lacks woody species, it lacks trees and shrubs and, and other um, kind of long-lived perennial species. So that makes this pretty unique. Now, meadow habitats are um, pretty widespread. There are parts of our country where we typically think of as as the meadow or the, the prairie grassland parts of our country and that's kind of the center part of our country between the Rocky Mountains and the, the Mississippi River. But a meadow is not necessarily a wild um, natural kind of habitat. Meadows can be man-made. There are many types of meadows that are um, agricultural. A meadow is a term that can be used for a grassland that is that is grown for grazing animals, cattle, sheep, etc. Um, it could also be on a farm that's used for cutting and uh, making into hay so that the animals can eat grasses during the winter months. The next kind of meadow that we're going to talk about is a transitional meadow. Um, here at the Outdoor Discovery Center we have some of that kind of habitat. A transitional meadow is a meadow that uh, used to be used for something else. So it used to be used for um, for some of those things, pasture lands, uh, hay fields, or it could have been a, an area that was cleared. Maybe it used to be forest, now it's cleared and then the forces of succession have started to take over. So once an area is cleared, some of the first plants that move in are these grasses and wildflowers. So for the first number of years, those, um, those cleared areas turn into something that looks kind of like this. If you don't mow your lawn, you will have a, a meadow in your, in your uh, lawn. But these types of areas, those grasses and wildflowers and other plants come in and then that provides all the benefits of this habitat um, until those forces of succession take over. And what I mean by succession is uh, bare land, changing to mature forest and all the stages in between. So eventually woody shrubby species are going to start to move in, be that from um, birds dropping seeds or under other animals moving seeds in or the wind blowing seeds in. So eventually this grassland habitat is going to turn into a more scrubby kind of a uh, somewhere in between where there will be trees and grasses and then eventually the shade from these trees and shrubby species will outcompete these um, these younger or these lower plants. So then the grasses and the wildflowers they won't have a chance to grow here. So then this becomes a more um, a more forested habitat. So if left um, to nature uh, grasslands typically become uh, something different, maybe a, more of a forested habitat instead. Next we'll talk about natural meadows. Natural meadows come in a lot of different shapes and sizes. Um, like I said, we, uh, we typically think about meadows and grasslands in the Great Plains of the United States, um, but here in Michigan, farther to the east, there are plenty of places where meadows happen. Again, those meadows could be man-made, they could be agricultural meadows, um, they could be established meadows. So this meadow that we're in right now uh, was put here on purpose. There are, there are not very many what we would call wild native grasslands here in Michigan. It's, it's more of a forested state. But um, in a lot of places, these meadows, these grasslands have been established. Um, so just a couple of examples. Um, in some places where we wouldn't think to find meadows, there can be. Uh, one type of meadow is called an alpine meadow. Alpine meadows are, are short grasslands and wildflowers that are at high elevation. So if you go into the mountains, the Rocky Mountains or otherwise, uh, once you get above tree line, above say nine or ten thousand feet above sea level, the the plant life changes and you'll get wide expanses of of um, of these alpine meadows and and the reason why the trees don't come in there this is a, a nature thing um, but the reason the trees don't come in is because the elevation is too high to support their growth so you have high elevation and uh, poor soil quality for growing trees another type of meadow is the desert meadow 
Lots of times in desert ecosystems, you have what we would consider meadows because there aren't trees growing there. And of course, the reason why trees and, and other shrubby plants can't survive in those types of meadows is because the, the water is not available. So um, the plants that have uh, adapted to grow in those types of habitats are, are very drought tolerant and they can survive long periods of time without rain. Okay, and then of course our prairies. Um, the prairies are the ones that when you, when you hear that word meadow or grassland, that's the picture that comes to mind. Miles and miles of, of tall grass meadows, tall grass prairies out in the Great Plains. Now of course, that's kind of a, a hard habitat to find too, a hard natural habitat to find. Most of that prairie land that was um, natural grassland habitat was converted into farmland because that grassland habitat was so rich and so fertile. Uh, one of the main reasons that type of habitat stays that type of habitat instead of turning into uh, more of a forest or a later successional habitat is because of wildfires. Uh, what that fire does is it breaks down all the, the dead grasses and plants and adds those nutrients back to the soil, but at the same time it kills those um, trees and shrubs that aren't very fire tolerant. Lastly, I want to talk about why meadows are so important. Um, it's a pretty special habitat that provides um, all the things necessary for, for a, a unique group of organisms. Now, of course, meadows are, are very diverse in plant life. There are hundreds of different species of, of plants that will grow here in this type of habitat. And those plants make uh, homes and food for all the different animals and, and insects and things that come here. So this is a place, now we're early in the season now, we're going to talk about this habitat a few different times during the growing season this year, um, but right now we're a little early for a lot of those animals to be out here. The insects are going to be the first things to, to be here, and, and the reason those insects are so important, number one, they're here, they're going to be eating all this food, and they're going to be happy and thriving. But those insects, grasshoppers and, and, and things like that, are very, very important to the, to the ecosystem. Those animals are, are a food source for other insects, the birds that are flying around here, um, amphibians, there might be toads in this meadow looking for um, grasshoppers and crickets and things, um, snakes, when, the, uh, when those types of animals are here, that attracts other animals too. So we've, this is a pretty important habitat for, for the food chain in that it provides, number one, um, food for produce or for um, consumers like grasshoppers and, and uh, crickets, low level consumers. And then we have the, the next level consumers, the birds and the snakes and the toads and frogs. And then of course, the, um, the foxes and the coyotes and the hawks and things that, that like to hang out um, over and around these meadows and these grasslands as well. Why is diversity important? Well, diversity is pretty important because um, a, a single species, whether it's a single plant species or a single insect species, can lead to um, the whole place kind of collapsing. If you have one animal that eats one food source and those are the only things here, well, what happens when all that food source is gone? It becomes a kind of a dead habitat. So we need to have that diversity so that all those plants and animals can thrive and, um, and be successful here. So let's recap real quick. Um, meadow habitats, they are primarily covered in grasses and uh, wildflowers. When we come back out here later in the summertime, we'll see the, the flowers and, and the plants that are blooming. Um, that'll be a pretty exciting visit. Um, and then of course these, these plant, or these plant uh, communities attract uh, ample wildlife and ample um, animal diversity too. So this is, a, this is a habitat type that is pretty key to a healthy ecosystem. We need to have this in conjunction with some of our other habitat types, our wetland habitats and our forest habitats and all those things when they, uh, when they come together. It, it really creates a, a healthy ecosystem. So, so we're here at the um, Sensory Trail Prairie or the Century Trail Meadow. Um, come out and take a look. As we work through the growing season, you'll see this, this place change a lot. So hopefully you can, you can join us and, and hopefully you learned a few things. Have a good day.